What's up, gang? I am Impending Death. Today, I'm going to show you how I do muzzle burn or scorched metal, that effect that happens when metal gets heated up and it changes kind of crazy iridescent colors. Actually, what this is, is a phenomenon called thin film interference. It produces colors on the surface of the metal. Uh, as the thickness of the layers increase with temperature, it causes the colors to change from a very light yellow to kind of a brownish, then a purple, then a blue. So to achieve that brown, I'm going to start off with scale 75 chestnut ink. I like ink because it's a little transparent. Now I'm going to thin this down heavily. I'm going about 10 drops of flow improver to one half drop of, uh, of the ink here. And I'm going to be using my Sotar here. I got my 0.2 needle in here. The pressure is really low on the airbrush. I'd say 15 maybe 10 PSI. Now the key here is I'm gonna work in really thin layers. I mean thin. You know, when I say thin when I'm painting regular opaque paint, I do mean, you know, thin, but it's still got an opacity to it. With the ink and thinning it down so much, ink is ridiculously pigment heavy. So you gotta be real careful with it. Even if you thin it down, it still could overpower a lot of your undertones. Now I've got this armature here and I painted this exhaust. You can do it on exhaust, you can do it on weapons, you can do it wherever you want to imply that the metal has been heated up. I'm gonna spray it over a brass or copper color here on the armature, and I'm taking it super thin, guys. I mean, I'm taking my time. The other thing about inks is they're super fluid. They're not like regular paint. They're not gonna be thick. They're gonna be super watery, almost. Another good thing that you could use is the transparent line from Pro Acryl. Of course, literally the second I started shooting this scene here, I got an email that transparents were back in stock. It is what it is, but uh, you know, I'll work with what I'm going to work with here. I've had inks for a while. I know what I'm doing with them. When I get the transparents in, maybe I'll do another version of this with transparents. But you can see I'm slowly building up this chestnut. Now I'm using the chestnut because I want it to kind of be a little more reddish brown uh, over the, that copper color. It's going to be a little harder to show the yellow tone. If I were doing a steel, then I would start using a little bit more of a yellowy color versus the chestnut. You can also start with um, Seraphine Sepia from G-Dub, the washes. That'll work too. Of course, now we're gonna move into the purples. I got the violet ink. These are from the Intensity set from Scale 75. I've shown these before in other videos. You get eight inks. There's two sets. You get eight inks in each set. You can get those at Michigan Toy Soldier. I'll leave a link down in this description with my discount code. So same thing here, except for with the chestnut ink, I was spraying kind of towards the bottom Let's say the the bottom third of the quadrant. We'll break this up into quadrants, okay? So, so I was working in the bottom third. Now I'm working on the middle-ish kind of you know, second area. I, I don't think bottom third is the right term. Basically, break it up into four sections, okay? And if we're starting at the bottom as one, building up to the very top of the exhaust is zone four. I started at zone two, now I'm on zone three. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm not confusing anybody, but it's late and yeah, I just put my kid to sleep. So same thing here, super thin. Make sure that you get all the way around the model. Now I mentioned this paint is extremely liquidy compared to regular paint. So you really wanna dial back your PSI and your airbrush. It's key that you understand how to control the different aspects of your airbrush be it the aperture of the needle and the nozzle or controlling your air it needs to be about 10 i mean 15 is high but if you can control your airbrush you're fine otherwise that ink will spider out on the part and this was gloss coated because i'm also going to be doing a wash stage next so i do have some gloss over this which would cause the paint to kind of spider out even more so softer air is better just working super thin layers as I spray this purple just above that red but I'm blending the two okay so you can see there's kind of a nice even gradient from that 
reddish brown up into the purple. Now we're going to shoot some blue on the very top or quadrant four. If we're keeping with my weird quadrant number thing. So we're going to go to purple, or I'm sorry, blue here. This is just straight blue ink from scale 75. I believe these are all in the first set of ink intensity. Yes, they are. They're all available in ink intensity one. Now I'm going to spray this over. See how thin that is? It's really controlled, really thin. But blue is stupid intense, guys. Like, in ink intensity is an understatement with these colors. They are insanely pigment rich. If you haven't worked with inks before, please test it out on something else before you spray your model. I'd, I'd hate to get a bunch of comments and say, oh, duff, I screwed up my model. Please test everything before you ever try it on a model. Make sure that you understand how things are working because that blue is super intense and you got to take it real slow and build it up until it gets that kind of scorched metal look. Now I'm going to overlap from the copper onto that steel where the, the little headers are. I don't know what they are. I'm not a mechanic, so I hate cars, but make sure that it, it sprays onto the copper and kind of blends with the purple because you've got to have a gradient, almost like a wet blend with your airbrush you can you can feather it in because we're essentially glazing so you got to feather it into the last step i feel that airbrush is a lot easier to do this effect than with traditional brush but you can totally pull this off with the traditional brush i would just use um citadel shades probably or even army painter whatever you have in the shade department it, it needs to be a yellow brown uh, reddish brown if you will uh, then it transitions into the purple and then it transitions into the blue the blue being the final color The name of the game is keeping that smooth transition and as you see me building up the color here I take it really gentle and I just make sure that I don't overwhelm it. So it still looks metallic underneath Okay, so I'm kind of just pulsing pulsing here Making sure that I'm not going to overpower the metallic and it still reads as a metallic and I'm going to spritz the top there because I missed a little little spots between the two pipes there. But once you got a good thin layer of it, I think this is a relatively easy procedure. And there you have it. Now, we'll go ahead off screen. You guys finish these how you want. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this thing off screen. And there you go. There's the finished look. I might use some pigments later. Work in some brown really deep dark brown and black definitely black to get kind of a sooty feel towards the tops of these exhaust pipes but I didn't do that this time because the focus isn't on the pigments for this technique the technique or the focus of the video is meant to be specifically on the color change of the metal now this color change that's actually a property of tempering whether it be intentional or not Sometimes steel, copper, etc. changes colors. So that's what we're looking for here to imply heat. And that thin layer of oxide that will eventually burn off and create these color changes on the metal. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love making these things. If you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer them for you guys. Some of you know this is my full-time gig doing content creation and teaching different painting classes at conventions with the whole COVID thing going on. A lot of the conventions I was scheduled to teach at are getting canceled or dropping like flies as I expected. With that being said, I do run a Patreon campaign that I try to focus more on the teaching aspect of things. You'll get early access to these videos. There is a tier where I teach one-on-one -on -one video classes with you. They start about 20 bucks an hour. And there's also different tiers for people who like to get swag tools, miniatures, etc. in the mail. So check out my link to my Patreon down below. And of course, I can't mention my Patreon without giving a massive shout out to my current patrons who are quite literally allowing me to do this full time and keep producing content. So thank you to all my patrons and to anyone who considers following my patron patreon is not the only thing you can 
do to help me though subscribing here following me on instagram following me on facebook is also a super big help and of course i also stream three nights a week on twitch tuesdays and thursdays 8 p.m eastern standard time till about midnight and then saturdays we do the long war all day streamathon it starts out with kenny and rolls into myself and then i take the party over to jack of club so make sure you check out that as well thank you guys so much i'll see you in two weeks for the next video until then stay safe and wash your hands